and the homework problem uh, asks you, suggests a, a way to count them uh, that it will allow you to write as the countable union countable sets. Okay. Uh, computable numbers are actually bigger, larger than the uh, the algebraic numbers. I mean, we have, you know, we can think of computer programs that can spit out third roots and fourth roots and fifth roots, right? Um, computable numbers, you know, for instance, pi and e are computable. We know how to do that, right? But what we're saying is, this, there's lots of numbers. In fact, way more numbers are not computable than are computable. Right? But it's only the computable ones we, some, in some sense, work with, right? that we, we know how to work with. Amazing. How many people think that's amazing? I think it's kind of amazing, right? It's amazing. OK, excellent. Um, great. So how did we show that R was uncountable? Well, we used uh, an, an argument due to, um, to Cantor called a diagonalization argument. And uh, what I want to show you today is, in fact, uh, that that is a, an example of, of something even more general. So the general fact is a, a theorem about power set. So let me remind you what a power set is. So given some set A, the set of all subsets will be called the power set. It has, it's denoted by a symbol, 2 to the A. And there's a reason for that. Uh, it is the set of all subsets of A. I feel like this is slipping here. It's the set of all subsets of A. OK, so uh, example. Here's my set. Maybe my set is, oh, um, let's see, uh, Cyclops, Smiley, Square, Triangle. There, that's a set. Okay. What's a subset? Well, would you agree that, um, for instance, uh, this set, D, uh, which consists of Cyclops, Smiley, and a triangle, is a subset? Would you agree that E, which consists of just triangle, is a subset? Would you agree that empty set? The set with no elements is a, is a subset. Yes? Oh, OK. These are elements of the power set. R in, R elements, these are sets that are themselves elements of 2 to the A. How many elements are in 2 to the A, uh, in the power set? 2 to the 3? Is that a coincidence? which has, in fact, two cubed elements. You want to see why it's not a coincidence? Check this out. Would you agree that D corresponds to a particular binary number? Namely, tell me which ones are in. Check, check, not. E corresponds to, oh no, this is wrong. Check, not, check. Yes? This is not, not, check. Yes? What's empty set correspond to? Not, not, not. Right? Do you see? And now you see there are, in fact, that two, two to the cubed elements. OK, so that's why we have this notation. It just makes us think of um, uh, subsets. Subsets are just specified by ones and zeros, aren't they? Yes? Ah, this is the, this is the fundamental idea then in, in proving our most amazing theorem. So this is Cantor's theorem. Georg Cantor. Uh, this is, um, uh, this diagonal argument was, is, is, this is what's called his diagonalization argument, or diagonal argument. It's, it actually dates to 1891, uh, but the, the, his proof that the real numbers were uncountable actually didn't, didn't at first use a diagonal argument. Okay, so that, was, that preceded it. That was like 1870-something, um, 1870 maybe 1874. 
But Cantor's diagonal argument holds for things much more general. So what it says is, uh, if you have, for any set A, A is not, cannot be put in a one-to-one -one correspondence with its power set. This is actually a, a good time to tell you about some mathematical etiquette. If you read the handout on good writing that I, I passed out, um, I mentioned that when you're doing formal mathematical writing, it's uh, usually not a good idea to start a phrase or a sentence with a symbol because it can be confusing, right? If you start a, 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 uh, a sentence with the letter big A, it looks like you're about to, A is an article, right? It's also true of phrases. So uh, one way to fix that here is, because it can be confusing with the comma, A comma A, uh, is just to put a few words here. Please pass. OK, so if we were doing formal writing, you'd want to not start a phrase with a, a letter, uh, although this is informal writing on the board. So I won't hold myself to it uh, in class. OK, let's prove this. Proof. How are we going to prove that a power set is not, uh, cannot be put in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a set? What, what should we, how should we start this proof? The claim is that there does not exist a one-to-one -one correspondence. So what's the, what's the easiest way to start this proof? There Suppose there is one. Then we have something specific to work with, don't we? And we'll try to get a contradiction. Good. So suppose. Proof by contradiction. Suppose uh, there exists, again, shorthand, uh, a bijection uh, F that goes from A to 2 to the A. Okay, so this is a bijection. I might even emphasize it to the reader. Now, what does this mean? This function will take what? Something in A, like a smiley face. And it will output what? A subset, like D or E, or, or empty set, for instance, right? So notice that what this means is every little a gets mapped to F of little a, which is a subset of A. Right, so an example might be it might be something like this. It might be smiley gets mapped to, mm, I don't know, smiley triangle, right? Could be, could be something like that. Are you with me? OK, good. Now, we have such a bijection. What should we do? <laughs> Write it out in some sense, right? Now, OK. Now, if you recall, so be, be, I already claim that this is somehow related to the proof that R is uncountable that we did yesterday, the last time, right? How is it related? Suppose there were a bijection. Then, Willie? Okay, you could try to, okay, you, you said the word list, and I, I'm a little uneasy about the word. Okay, so uh, one reason I'm worried about the word list, I like your idea, I'm just going to avoid using the word list because we don't know that A is necessarily countable. This is going to be true for any set A, in fact. A might be hugely uncountable. But whatever it does, it's going to mimic, in the countable case, what happened with our proof that real numbers are uncountable. So here's the idea. I'm just going to show you the idea here. And um, you know, maybe, for instance, I take an element in A, and I'm associating to that element f of A, which is in the power set. Yes? And you know, um, so I'm going to construct uh, 